think of a joke, let me think of a joke. Um, uh, wow, I was gonna, yeah, okay, wow. <laughs> um, uh, this is quite a way to come back to YouTube after several months of inactivity, isn't it? Hello. Um, this month, June, is Scoliosis Awareness Month. I couldn't really think of what to, um, post, like what kind of video I could post that um, related to that. You probably don't know this about me, but back in 2018 of September, I had a spinal spinal fusion, is what it's called, on my spine, obviously, to, <laughs> to fix my scoliosis. Um, I'm, I'm gonna put out like a series of videos on that in the future, but um, I just want to talk right now the mental aspect of it because I feel like that's something that gets overlooked and um it, it should be talked about because it's important okay so real quick i'm just gonna show you kind of the before and the um after of my surgery and lucky for us i have it on my phone case i'm actually in therapy now because of the whole situation but if you or a friend or whatever um, are getting ready to have the surgery, don't let that scare you. Um, this is, when I talk, this is just based on my experience alone and there are like little hiccups that happen. So, you know, don't worry too much. So I'm gonna start off on the happy side. When I got the surgery done, I wanna say maybe two weeks after or so when I was home and able to walk a little bit on my own, um, I remember going to the bathroom and I lifted my shirt up and I looked at it, my back. I just wanted to be able to see for myself that it was it was straight because I had a hump. Um, and I can talk more about that in a different video. But yeah, I had a hump and it brought me a lot of not only physical pain but mental pain as well. I didn't like um, wearing tight shirts um, for like a good two, yeah, a good like year and a half, two years, I wore only my dad's shirts. They're just very, uh, shirts that are large. Like, I wear a medium, I was wearing, like, XX lunches, you know? Um, I just, I wasn't comfortable with my back, and there are these pictures I took with a friend of mine, and it was from, from the back, and I just hated them so much, because you could tell. And so that's, that just gives you a little bit of an inside view to how I looked at it, but when I went two weeks after my surgery, I went and I looked at my back and I, I near cried with how happy I was to see that my back was straight. <laughs> it was such a relief. It really was. And talking on relief, I, I can't explain how relieved I am to still be here because I think something that people don't realize is scoliosis can be life-threatening. In my case, it was. I had to have the surgery, or I very well may not have not be sitting here. You know, I was, I believe I was 14 at the time. I'm 16 now, and, um, okay, so yeah. I was so very depressed before my surgery, and part of that is just me having depression but another another part of that is the way I looked I just did my body I just didn't feel comfortable in my ribs they they were lopsided kind of that's why I had the hump and it, my clothes they didn't fit because my hips again were also not bright none of, none of this here was right because my spine had twisted and curved so much and I just, I felt very deformed. I, I hated looking at myself. There were weeks where I couldn't, I just, I couldn't look at myself. But now I am just so happy. I mean, I, I get depressed still because I have depression. You know, it, it didn't just go away. I do get, well, I don't anymore because again, therapy. Thank my therapist. <laughs> but I used to get panic attacks every single day. I remember 
remember walking in Hobby Lobby with my parents a couple months after my surgery and I wasn't really used to walking yet, you know, so I was thinking about the pain I was in and I remember trying to tell my parents something about it. I was trying to talk about some memory I had of me in the hospital and I couldn't say the word. For the longest time I couldn't think about the hospitals, I couldn't see pictures of anything that had to do with the with the hospital, you know? Um, I couldn't say the word, I couldn't say the word surgery, I couldn't talk about what I was feeling. And now, I mean, I, I still get nervous, but I can say the words, I can think about the, the memories, and it's, gra it's great, it's so good. I never thought I was gonna go a day without a panic attack, but I've gone quite a while now, and I'm really, really grateful for that. I used to have nightmares weekly, like st several times a week sometimes, um, and that's actually partly why I went to therapy. I think my parents could really see that it was taking a toll on me, and we were like, well, we gotta do something, and again, therapy was the answer. Um, it, it's, it takes a toll on you. The surgery for months after, and even now, I just was so much more emotional after. I cried about so much and that could ha that could be like a multitude of things. It could be because my brain was finally letting me feel things that it wouldn't let me feel in the hospital while I was in danger, you know? And it could be of the, because of the meds I was on, but it, it could be any number of things. But it was it was terrifying because I felt like I couldn't talk about it with anyone. I didn't feel like anyone really knew what I was going through. And, and they didn't, you know? I didn't know anyone who had gone through this. So it was really hard because I felt completely alone. And I think that's kind of what I'm aiming to do with, with this is maybe help other people get like, you're not alone. These, you're, you're not going crazy feeling like this. You know, it's perfect perfectly rational response to your body being def like deforming itself it and the pain that I lived with before my surgery and even after um that took a toll on me as well because it felt like I was dying sometimes there the pain would be so much sometimes that I would I would sit in my bed and I would curl up and I wanted to I didn't know if I was gonna die. At 14 years old, I remember both my parents were out of the house and I had elected to stay home. I was tired and I was laying in the middle of my mattress and I thought I was gonna die. I was really scared that my parents were gonna come home and find their, find their daughter's body dead. You know, I, I was worried. It scared me. Yeah, I think right now, mentally, relating to this I am doing really good um there are times when I'm talking about it the, the way I was kind of treated before I was formally diagnosed like with my school it, it was really hard because I would be in so much pain in gym class because I mean think about um the way that you know like here um you can kind of see you know it's it kind of compresses some of my organs like on my stomach or my lungs my lungs especially so when I would be in gym class, we would, you know, have to run and we'd have to do different stuff. But I was just in so much pain and I would be basically hyperventilating because I was in so much pain I could barely talk. And I'd be leaning against one of my friends. I remember they had to hold me up this one time and I was hyperventilating because I could not breathe. I was in so much pain and my gym teacher, he told me to push through it. And it was, and honestly, if there is like an adult watching this, and I highly doubt many people are watching this because I'm a very small channel, but if there's an adult watching this and a kid tells you that they can't breathe and you're telling them to continue running, I'm sorry, but you are an awful person. You know what, fuck it, no, I'm not sorry. How can you look a child in the face and tell them that they need to push through pain? I really think the takeaway from this is you are not alone. It is okay to let your emotions get the best of you because when your body 
is doing things that you're not understanding and you are in pain, it is okay to be confused and to be terrified, it is okay. And thirdly, listen to people when they're telling you that there's something going on and they don't understand. Because if my parents had not listened to me and taken me to a doctor, well, I guess I wouldn't be here, would I? Be sad, I guess. <laughs> that was awkward. Okay, sorry, um, I just, I just thought of a joke. I'm as straight as my, um, wait, fuck, hold, let me think. I'm about as straight as my spine. Ha, 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 